you doing? I'm doing well. You you just barely, have it. Yeah, just bear with me one moment. I just need to sort out my other camera. Just bear with me one sec. No worries. Sorry about that. If I if no, I lean to one side, it's just because I'm having a cup of tea at the moment. <laughs> A very, a very, very British thing at any time of the day, you know. Yeah, totally. Where are you at right now? So uh, a Star I'm, Wars cup of tea. Of that. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's it's such a cliche, isn't it, for a for a nerd for the Star Wars cup and all that. But yeah, uh, I'm in Chester, which is uh, near Liverpool, Manchester, that way north northwest of UK. Very nice. So uh, welcome to the podcast. And uh, can you just introduce yourselves a little bit and the name of your film? Uh, sure. Uh, so my name is Jonathan Weinstein. I'm Laura Vosberg. Um, and I've, we... I've seen two of you now. Sorry to cut you off, but I've seen two of you now in that film. So, And uh, what was the yeah. name of your film? Uh, it's uh, The title is Quarantine Cheating. Yeah, Bit I thought... of a pun there. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, from the people I've told because... We can't, we're we're very precious in in terms of uh, showing not showing the films early. I know some people have submitted to multiple festivals, which is fine. But your I love, as soon as I saw your title because it was one of the first things we see in the emails. It was it was a lot of fun, especially the pun, you know. And I thought, oh yeah. right, oh great. And then you had your little your little bio about where you're from and what you do, and that was that was a really appealing thing. That something that was just based in the UK is now. It's like everywhere, which is great for us. And we've only started this, what, seven or eight weeks ago? Good so. for you guys. No, it's a wonderful initiative. And we actually, I mean, originally when we thought of making this film, it was in response to a prompt, a local prompt in Israel in Tel Aviv for, for shorts about the sort of the COVID times. And then once we made the short and we were happy with it, we realized we could actually subtitle it and see if there might be an audience for it abroad and we, we came across your festival first thing and we loved the idea and uh we're glad we we got to share it through you with i'm really thrilled that i got to do this because i'm a natural goofball and i love <laughs> doing characters and i love doing really short honey stuff and jonathan is a serious filmmaker and <laughs> trying to get him to do stuff that are fun, is fun with me it's really it was a great opportunity to persuade him to do so so yeah, uh, not you being in front of the camera so that's a, that's a new thing it's sort of. difficult yeah. isn't it it's difficult because yeah. i get very precious with my partner she's taking pictures of me I'm like no over there from there <laughs> i get too much of a control freak and you might not be like that but it's like it, you know you, you know what you want don't you so it must have been that's why I, that's why I, I kind of loved your film quite a lot because I could see there was a good relationship between the characters and you too. And I thought that was really strong. And the biggest compliment I can give you is I wanted to see more. It was Thank like, you. it felt, it was a really nice short film. It's either it could be a bigger film or bigger project, or it could be a series, a web series or something. So is that potentially something you would be interested in doing? Uh, yeah, I think Lara was actually the one who, because originally we thought of, of, uh, of two separate ideas and we ended up doing this one, but the other one that we actually thought of, funnily enough, has also sort of a scenario that involves cheating yeah. and, and, and during quarantine. Right. So we thought we could almost try and work out some sort of little anthology of like... <laughs> films that are not necessarily with the same characters but thematically based around the that. problem is that he's gonna be always depicted as the cheater <laughs> so somehow i'm like gonna, he's gonna have to hire me as his pr trying to explain to everyone that he's actually a really good guy yeah that's a really we're, good we're a couple in real life and uh, i don't i don't cheat in our relationship so this, this is <laughs> not that i know of <laughs> he's really good at, at concealing it yeah <laughs> Um, oh so how long have you been a, a filmmaker, Jonathan? Um, I started very early on when I was um, 14. I, um, I sort of learned how to edit and, um, and I originally was, was more into music before that. I learned how to edit. I found that very appealing. And then I decided to make a very personal film about uh, my grandmother, who was a Holocaust survivor. Uh, she was already in her 90s at the time. And... Um, and I thought a documentary was a great way to sort of, you know, make sure that her story is is kept for uh, for the future. And and it became a really interesting project, sort of more 
not just a personal project, but a full on hour long feature doc. And, and I think that part of the appeal when I submitted it to festivals and realized it, it had an audience way beyond what I expected was that suddenly this wasn't just um, a Holocaust survivor story, but told through the perspective of, of the third generation. And I think that's something that really spoke to people. So that was my first sort of foray into filmmaking. Wow, that's uh, quite a peaceful, um, um, powerful piece of material, uh, especially as a as a first big project. And uh, yeah. must be quite, must be quite, I, that, sorry, go on. No, no, just to say that since then, I focus mostly on narratives, but I, I would actually love to go back to, to try and do a, a doc as an adult at some point. But, uh, he helped me do my doc that's on its way. Yeah. Oh, right. what's, the, what's that documentary about? Um, it's about Ruth Dayan, who is the wife of the um, uh, Moshe Dayan, who used to be that yeah, basically minister was the minister of defense in Israel and the, um, a great general and part of the government. Yeah, the, the dissonance between the two characters essentially is that he pursued war while she pursued peace. She created the first couture fashion house in Israel that employed Palestinian women, Yemenite women, Jewish women, and they all worked together and she pursued peace initiatives in other ways. Um, so it was, I, we shot it quite a while ago, but we've been, I've been studying creative writing uh, and I'm writing a bunch of short films and a full narrative film in Hebrew uh, and some short stories, flash fiction. Um, That's incredible. So yeah, That's really incredible. Good. I like, is that something that, um, I don't want to pry into your business, but is that how you met on, on like working on a film or was it something else? We, do you want to? You, you can go. <laughs> uh, we met in an acting class, actually. So um, by that, Lara was started, uh, she can tell more about that, but she started for acting professionally pretty early on. And uh, she was already a, an accomplished actress by the time she went to that class. And I, on the other hand, and never dared attempt to act and but I did already know that I wanted to direct and I wanted to to be sort of better equipped to work with actors on performance so I figured that was a good sort of way to to test the waters and see what it feels to be on the other side um it wasn't actually in many ways it wasn't a successful workshop for me professionally because I think it was very uh was too intense for what I needed at that point of my life in terms of how sort of like heads up, head on it was, but I, uh, but I got to meet Lara out there. So it was definitely worth for it. For me, it was really intense as well. I was told by a professional acting uh, coach that I would never act. And three months later, I got a lead role in a film, in an IFC horror film in LA after just after two weeks of being there. So I was like, <laughs> what's up <laughs> and, uh, yeah. horrors horrors are a really interesting avenue for a lot of actors and I'm, I'm a huge horror fan i don't know how you two feel about it but i am a massive horror fan if you listen to the music for the intro for the podcast it's more john carpenter than anything else so a friend of mine wrote the music and he's we've got some really talented people as part of our festival and i'll tell you a little bit more about that later but That's it, exciting. it it must be really gratifying to get a part in a film like that and then someone that's just said yeah you've got no chance it it was fantastic because it was like a feminist horror film it was a female uh heroin addict who uses heroin to suppress a demon and then she goes on a killing binge once the heroin is out uh it was fantastic to play it i loved not being like I was raised to be polite and nice as a girl and just to let loose and just be a monstrous thing is so nice. <laughs> it was a very, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> complete freedom, got that complete time. freedom, yeah. I love that. Uh, no, you, people should check it out. Anyone watching, by the way, the title of the film is Inner Demons. Um, I'm, it's I on think Amazon. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, I think one of the things I liked about it, I'm, I'm actually, 
not quite the horror fan. I, I, I sir, it's funny, sir. I, I don't consider myself a horror fan, but yeah. a few of my favorite films of all time, I guess, are horror films like The Shining or oh, Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, films like that. Um, but um, I, I obviously went to see the film knowing a lot was in it, and um, one of the things I liked about it is it's very much done as sort of a, a documentary style, sort of like a mockumentary almost, and um, it has sort of, it has a bit of levity and comedy to it earlier on, which really helps sort of establish the tone, so I thought that helped too, and she, she does great work in it. Quite well, that's really again. nice. A lot of horror just establishes the horror and they kind of lose out on the characters are so important and making you connect with the characters is very important in any film, really. And I've just noticed it's on Amazon Prime UK as well. So I'll watch that at the weekend. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so I do this little I do this little thing on my Instagram account. It's just it's just a fun thing I do for film reviews and I do horror reviews at the weekend. So I think Inner Demons is going to be the one for the weekend. Oh, that's nice. exciting. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I like that. And, uh, and did you kind of, was it a, a good opportunity to network over there when you, when you made that feature film? Um, yes, yes. It was a wonderful, first of all, it was wonderful while working because I worked with a really talented director. His name is Seth. And... I worked with a wonderful cast of actors and the makeup artist did amazing things because he had to turn me into a monster and I had to sat, sit in a, in a chair like for six hours until he turned me into a complete devil. <laughs> um, was, that, was it all practical effects? Mostly? Uh, no, it was also... It was a combination, yeah. A combination. Okay, cool. Because that, that's a tricky thing with horror or any feature, as you can probably agree to, that... As soon as everything's CG, it, you just lose any kind of connection you have with the characters and yeah. the substance. So a mix can absolutely work as well, which is great. The, um, the, actually, I was, because it was the first lead role I had done in a film, I was really scared because I was told the editor can make it or break it. I could have given like a bad performance and he could have turned it into a good performance and he could have, he could have taken my good performance and wrecked it. Yeah, and he I, did a yeah. Job. absolutely. I can, I, from the experience I have of uh, filmmaking and documentary making and that the edit is, is crucial because some filmmakers with a clear vision can have everything in their head. They know exactly how it's going to work. And then the editing process is uh, almost secondary, but some editors can really be masters as well. They can turn performances good or bad. So it's a very good point and it's it's a big eye opener, especially when you see if you get to see your own outtakes or your own work and how they oh why did they choose that one? I remember that one being better. So yeah, you're absolutely right. The editing process is such a massive uh, and crucial part. Like uh I think it was was it last year's Oscars or the year before they were gonna not televise the editing and the cinematography category on TV. Even yeah, though it's two of the biggest categories yeah, yeah. going I which it was is, not not the last the year before yeah yeah and um, especially when you've got uh, masters like uh, roger deakins as a cinematographer and you're gonna what not give him his first oscar because he'd be nominated what 14 times and it's yeah, no, you know it's sure. it's it's quite disgusting isn't it because it you know and those awards really what do they mean um because you know we all we all disagree we all love to disagree with awards and all of that uh, so that's something we've we've looked at a small amount in terms of how do we, I think we're going to do like a poll of, in terms of favorites, you know, like fan favorites, uh, founder favorites, like uh, myself and a couple of the other original founders of the festival are going to pick and we'll have kind of best in show, that kind of thing. And uh, in terms of title, I love your title so much. <laughs> Thank you. Especially when I read it the first time. I was like, oh, right. This sounds really interesting. Oh, it's from Tel Aviv. <laughs> this is really cool. Very international. Great. And then, it's funny, um, actually, because originally we titled it in Hebrew. Um, and I remember when, when we were about to upload it to your festival, we were like, oh, shit, we don't have a title in English. And it kind of just suddenly it was obvious <laughs> how to translate it. I just want to, for a second, I just want to take it back because I want to give a compliment to Yonatan. <laughs> he is the ideal combination of a director and an editor. 
be, having that combination is, is magnificent and I feel so safe in his hands and I can't wait to work with him on other things because I know he has my best interests, but I know he has the best interest of every person he ever edits. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you've got a director and he's the life, not the lifeblood of the film, but close enough, he's like the captain of the ship. He'll go down with the ship. You know what I mean? And the fact that he's the editor as well, it's, it makes such a difference. It really does because he knows what he's getting. He, cause you must be, you know, you're thinking several steps ahead. That'll work. That'll work. Oh, that's a nice moment. That'll work. And then that's the reason you have notes about your edit, your edit decision list. And you go back. Oh yeah. Look through all the takes. And some editors that I know of of short films don't look through all takes and they just, fa it's like, what are you even doing? You know, you're giving all this material. I honestly, uh, having learned more about, you know, the other editors and more projects recently, because that's in, in the past couple of years, editing has been my main craft and hearing about other people's work, I've started to realize that probably most editors <laughs> don't, don't look at everything. all takes, which is very... That is right. mortifying for me. As an actress, yeah. it's absolutely mortifying. Yeah. Some of that can Generally, be, the, some of that can the, be the, the decision list on set where... Yeah directors give notes to the uh to some sort of assistant that says oh these are the best takes but still you should, i'm still a believer everything should be gone through like the finest example is um francis Ford coppola and the opening of apocalypse now that was in a bin that was in a bin getting dismissed that was an off cut obviously that was that was just a cutaway for the big action scene but you know yeah. that you discover gold sometimes or some sort of quirky quirky moment that or accidental camera move or something like that that might work in some other way so Definitely. there's a lot to be said God, to go God through everything <laughs> yeah absolutely he's an absolute yeah. legend working three years on the sound of that film is insane yeah so we actually got to see it so we're based mostly in between new york and tel aviv mostly in new york and we went i think it was last year to the 40th anniversary screening of Apocalypse Now. And I'm Coppola very jealous. And Coppola was there and Walter Murch was in the audience and Robert Duval was there. And it was very, very exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was a special moment. Originally, it was supposed to be in a purpose-built cinema when they came up with that film. One cinema yeah. for that film and all they were going to show is that film. Obviously, that's, that's too expensive to do something crazy yeah. like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I really want to see, I want to see more of these characters or at least something that like an anthology kind of thing that'll be i think a lot of fun yeah well now you uh hopefully you gave us ex the extra yes, motivation yes, to, you have. <laughs> when to people see it there. yeah when people see it they will absolutely agree with me i'm not like because i'm a big fan of the fact that everyone's submitting a film to our festival when we started seven weeks ago it's kind of humbling that you know you you know your works the social media is working all of that but when you see something that's been uh, lovingly crafted and a lot of fun, a lot of heart, and not too, you know, it's not too serious, and you need you need kind of light moments as well, because obviously we've yeah. got diary entries from people in difficult positions, that kind of thing. So we've we didn't look for a certain genre; we looked for a broad spectrum of content, and it was just so pleasant to see. Your film. I was watching it at like what time was I watching? Like two in the morning, something like that. I was just about to go to sleep. <laughs> And I was laughing, and then Vicky was saying to me, oh, what are you laughing? I said, well, you've got to watch this. Just watch this. Now she's half asleep. <laughs> and that's how, that's how most of the content's come through, because I do pretty much all the admin. We've got a new member of the team, Nadia, coming in, and she's going to help do the admin, the curation, and the content and that. So I just passed it to Vicky, and she's my standing body. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And that's how most of the films have come in, and it's really lovely to see. We've got films from Australia, Israel, uh main you know europe us canada south america it's it's Incredible. quite because we wanted to build a community of and connect everyone and we'll, we're we're going to work out a way of doing that as well um because okay. it's we've got people from uh people of 9 10 years old creating animations and wow. seasoned filmmakers that are making horror like we've got a chap from uh toronto his horror is really dark really really <laughs> dark but it you know it just the variety is, is what we're happiest with. And initially we thought we were only going to get 10 to 15 films because we we're extremely small. There's only two of us. And now we've got over 65, almost 70 now. 
Uh, wow. So I was, was super proud. And when yours came in, I was, I was really, really chuffed to see it. Thank um, you. No, that's exciting. It's, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, we have a friend who submitted in Israel a short film that seems like a bit alternative film vibe. It's a bit dramatic. And I was like, wow, it's unbelievable the choices you have even within two minutes to yeah. create. I think, and that's why I'm very in love right now in writing with flash fiction. I don't know, how do you call cinema that is two minutes? That's also like, like yeah. flash- Short shorts. Flash, <laughs> short shorts. Short shorts, yeah. <laughs> that's a different, there's a different <laughs> reference for that as well. Isn't I, yeah. <laughs> so well, yeah, uh, 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 and yeah. I know you initially going to call um, uh, label your film in Hebrew, but if that's something you can do anyway, because if the translation is not quite right, if I try to translate your title, if you can send it in Hebrew, then when we put the because we're designing film posters for every single film, we've got two artists doing that, and yes, we'd love is. to have your pitch, your first, uh, poster in Hebrew. That'd be incredible for us to do. With the title, you mean? Yeah, that will be absolutely... You know, like when you see a Japanese film poster, it just looks incredible, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? So <laughs> it's the same thing. In Hebrew, it'll be super... It'll just look fantastic for us. So sure. well, what we're doing is think. we're figuring out a way to send out uh, all of the posters worldwide as well. So every filmmaker gets a poster of their own film, uh, a one-off print as well. Uh, wow. So um, it's kind of a nice little gesture to everyone and it's different to all the other festivals because a lot of the other festivals you have to pay to enter and all of that. So we thought, what no, can we, sure. what can we do? And I think that'll be a really nice thing. And you, I don't know if you've seen any of the updates on uh, Instagram at all, but we've showcased a, a two or three of the posters and they've gone down very, very well now. So we'll do the same for your film as well. So when can we, uh, when will we be able to see the films, other people's films? Uh, so it closes on the 31st. Now, these little details are being worked out after that. So yeah. it's closing on the 31st. And then the week after that, there's going to be a series of announcements about um, all the content going forward. So there's going to be a weekend. I think we're going to work out, a th um, thanks to you guys and people in Australia as well, we're going to uh, work out a, a three-time zone a showcase uh, live on, Insta on uh, YouTube. So we'll have, uh, we'll have different um, spaces where you can see all the films and we'll have little intros for all of them as well with the holding page for every film is going to be the poster. So once that's finished, we're going to kind of compile that. We're going to have like a, a live uh, chat uh, function as well, a Zoom meeting with some of the filmmakers. So all of that's going to be announced the week after the 31st. That's very exciting. We're looking so forward to it. I like your shirt, by the way. Oh, it's <laughs> basically because my, my weight yo-yos, it kind of hides a lot of sins. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going through my uh, I'm going through my late Marlon Brando phase at the moment and it's like a jungle so you don't have to go all the way to, like to South America or Asia you you have the jungle on you yeah exactly yeah I've got this huge soft box here two lights I'm cooking right now my face is going red <laughs> you know, so so yeah it's uh I'm really I'm really very happy that you've come on board with the film festival and uh, it's well, something. To thank be, you for having and us, and I think it's a great initiative to do this podcast too. I mean, that's definitely going the extra mile with with everything. It's amazing doing. how you guys organized all of this so fast. Really, it's amazing. It's because I'm drinking so much coffee and tea, <laughs> and plus because I work as a photographer and video maker for a university in Chester, and right. I thought I found it extremely. This is how I found isolation. I found it extremely difficult the first week when everything closed. And uh, Chris and I, at the, uh, the work together in, in video production, we thought, why don't we do something where we create content for each other and we have a bit of fun? And then later that same day, we came up with the idea, why don't we open up to people online? And then we spot, that sparked the idea for the festival. I thought, right, we need to open this up. We bought the domains, we got everything. And then it was, it's kind of blossomed since then. And it's like been nonstop. So there's at least one update every day or there's at least admin every day. You know, there's so many emails coming in about laurels and design stuff and all of that. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. It's kind of a, it's a good way to distract yourself from what's going on outside. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I think it's the best possible time to do something like that uh, for, as you said, probably both for you guys, because you uh, it's just a good time to keep yourself busy and focused, and it really helps once you devote yourself to 
any sort of project and definitely for the audience. I mean, people yeah. are stuck at home and looking for content and looking for absolutely yeah. to take their minds off of life. <laughs> so it's great. So the it's initial really- idea for the podcast was that I had was about a week after we started the festival and I wanted a way to, I thought this is a good opportunity for any filmmaker that would like to, to be part of a process and, we wanted to make them feel as, as though they're part of a new community online. And we didn't just want to accept the film. Thanks for that. And then put it up online. It's there's something to disconnect there. We wanted to make it personal and, you know, a bit more engaging. So every time there's a comment online about something, we engage with every single comment that might not happen if we change it next year, you know, we'll have a little tweet and it goes, it, it blows up even more, yeah. uh, but we're trying our best and we're bringing people on board. So there's something I wanted to show you. This is the, I don't know if you've seen the podcast artwork, but we're changing it. And we had an Australian designer who's stuck in the UK, can't go home. Wow. So she's a friend of another designer that designed all the posters, but she's designed the new artwork for the podcast. So this will be the first time anyone else has seen it. So I'll show you this. Exciting. Um, so we, I was really happy with it. <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a picture of me in the background, which is a little bit odd, but I, I was quite happy with it. <laughs> Are you wearing that shirt in the picture? Or uh, no, thankfully not. In the in some other alternative horror thing that I'm doing, there is me with the shirt on, which is odd. Uh, okay. But let me find it now. I'm going to show you a couple of the films as well, which is cool. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, so let's go to that. This is the bit of the podcast that no one will see because I'll cut it out. <laughs> okay. So let's go to that. Go to Tamazon's email. So we're giving, they've kind of donated their time and design work for, you know, because we approached them, we said, we love your work. We're going to, every, every post that's sent out, depending on how we do that, is going to have a letter with the contact details, all the designers, that kind of thing. So we've said to them, we, we, your work's going to be seen worldwide by a multitude of filmmakers and that kind of thing. And it's really nice to be able to kind of, you know, share credit where you can because we're doing this from a kind of a non-profit point of view you know definitely yeah so let's find that it's loaded okay need to make that a bit smaller because it's absolutely massive oh this is the fun with pdfs don't know if you know graphics that's just there we go that's better So how are you guys getting on with isolation in general? Uh, we're pretty lucky because being in Tel Aviv now, things are, uh, are a lot better. I mean, practically everything over the past couple of weeks, everything has gradually opened up um, with even restaurants and cafes are supposed to open up in just three or four days. So. Which is really irresponsible. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out later, I guess. <laughs> is but it- I mean... What's the, what's the way that, sorry, what's the way they're doing that with the restaurants? Are they having booths outside or anything like that? I think they're just, uh, you know, they have sort of, I'm not entirely up to speed with everything, but I know that they do have um, a meter and a half uh, minimum, like, uh, distance between each table. Um, and the waiters have some sort of regiment about, you know, cleaning each table before and after serving anyone. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to find out. I mean, as of now in Israel, there aren't, uh, I think a few days ago was one of the first days where, where there were thankfully no one, no deaths due to Corona and, um, and, uh, you know, the, the sort of the, the number of people sick now is only at least tested and positive is just a few thousands out of, uh, eight or so million population. So it's, it's pretty That's a good one. Yeah pretty good but we'll it's, see you know remains yeah. to be seen it's it, it's so mentally exhausting isn't it to be part of all of this because everyone's part of it and yeah not, not being able to go outside the right way because i've been isolated now for eight weeks and <laughs> i want a haircut i really want a haircut <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no same I, it's, it's, that's one of the main uh, one of the main trouble uh, troubles with this time uh but yeah i mean we we sort of left for Israel when we realized things in New York are going to be worse. Oh, is that what, is that what you chose to do? That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's, it's 
difficult because a part of us would have, you know, I think we, we always like coming back here because our families are here and we have a connection to the place too. But um, in many ways, our home in life currently is back in New York. And we, at this point, we're almost, I think we're starting to feel like, okay, we've had enough time here. We want to go back now, but we sort of can't in a way because it's not, you know, where, where there's not much to go back to. But I'm um, happy we're here because then if we were in New York, we wouldn't have made the film, Foreign true. Cheating. That's true. Yeah. And he, I think both of us have gone into the mode of creating. I've just been writing a lot, stories. And wow. Yonatan, That's really good, yeah. And Yonatan is writing a TV series with his, with a partner and it's going really well. Yeah, we're working on a on a pitch deck for sort of a limited series that we're hoping to to pitch to TV producers here in Israel. So superb. I think I think content now in terms of uh, your part of the world in Tel Aviv is is really growing and people's not acceptance, but people that kind of opening up to wider content now thanks to you know Netflix and Amazon and other services. Because my uh, Vicky, she just watched a series called uh, Stiesel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's and it, she hit. absolutely sorry. It's become a huge hit. I mean, yeah, it was in Israel, but even internationally it's it's become a sort of a phenomenon on Netflix and it's very interesting. Well, hopefully um, it'll build up a more understanding and acceptance, you know what I mean, generally. It shouldn't have to be like that, but I think that she Vicky absolutely loved it and it's great to see a show like that uh become so popular worldwide. So I finally, it's interesting, I, I, it's interesting sorry, actually yeah. because it's something like Stissel for, I think for us, so, you know, for people abroad, it's interesting because it obviously sort of opens up this uh, view of another way of life and another public. But the interesting fact is I think for us as secular Israelis who are not necessarily practicing and don't live that kind of lifestyle, we it's sort of new for us too. I mean, there's, it's, there's a large population of Orthodox or religious uh, Jews in Israel, but, but it's to some extent segregated of, on their own choice. I mean, they choose to live sort of their own, a bit of an isolated lifestyle. And, and for us, we're sometimes a lot of us are not as familiar to what that's like. And I think that it's interesting that a, a show like that doesn't necessarily just open up that world to an international audience. It even opens up sort of a, we should uh, recommend, a world here too. We so. should recommend the TV series with Shira Haas. Oh yeah, there's a, you might have heard of Unorthodox too. Uh, oh, Netflix. that's massive, massive. Yeah. yeah, I haven't watched that, but I'm gonna write that down. Also, really interesting. I'm getting all uh, these really great recommendations from worldwide now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I finally found the artwork of. of uh, Sort okay. myself out. So let's share the screen. So this is the for the audio podcast, <clears throat> and we're going to grow the podcast as well. So we've not just called it the Isolation Film Festival. We've called it a, a, a podcast. We've called it an Isolation Film Festival podcast, and it's going to be changed to the filmmakers. So the podcast for the next few months, at least, is going to be focused purely on the filmmakers, and then we're going to expand it and mature it. And obviously, next year, we don't just want to. We don't want to dismiss the history of the uh, film festival. We kind of want to mature it and grow it from its its uh, green shoots now, you know. So let me find that. Share that. So this is the new artwork for the podcast. Oh, wow. Nice. So That's this great. is a, a talented artist called Mia from Australia. I'll put her credit in the uh, podcast uh, uh, info. Beautiful. And I'm going to show you the. Um, I'm going to show you one or two films as well. So I'm going to it's the character. Them. Is the character based on anyone specific or so not? That's, that's me, but it's like a. Yeah. It's from a statue. It's like as though I'm a statue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, because it looks very. It's it's almost like a, a sort of like modern hipster take on a <laughs> Greek statue. Of that's sorts. exactly it. And there's a there's like a <laughs> there's like a DJI Ronin in the background with the camera on as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's it's, right. uh, I, I couldn't believe the, uh, the generosity of some of the artists we've had in, involved uh, is, is being incredible and we're going to credit them as, as much as we can. And if we continue to do this and it grows, we're going to hopefully commission them properly next year as well. So I, what, yeah. Yeah. No, I just want to say I, I produced uh, 
a play a couple of years ago and producing is really hard and it was a um, I had no budget and everybody was volunteering and trying to give everybody a feeling that their work is appreciated and that you're gratifying it and the fact that these artists did this for you it's really major and it means you're doing a really good job as a producer oh thank you very much that makes me feel great <laughs> no uh, but yeah it's I remember Lara producing the play and I felt like at least as much of the effort she's put into the play itself was put into sort of just trying to, to thank the people who contributed their time and effort. So it's, it's definitely a, that's an undertaking in and of itself. But, I think uh, that's, a, that's a talent of young filmmakers uh, that fr uh, from my experience, if you've got a good idea and you've got someone driving it forward, you can you can pull people along. You're not exploiting them, but you can you know they can all build something really quite special if they're if they're on the right track and they see the message. So that must obviously happen when you uh, produce the play and directed the play, because without that, I think people drop off. They get flaky. They leave. They don't want to be part of it. But if you've got a really strong idea and your enthusiasm's there and your direction's there, people want to you know, draw to you and. And you know that that's a I, I see that as a really nice compliment that these artists have have done this work, and uh, let me show you they've got like sixty five posters to finish. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to show you a couple of films now. So this is a little sneak peek I do with everyone on each po uh, podcast. So I don't want to choose the same ones, but there's some absolute gems for. So we've got films that are budget wise zero to something that looks fantastic. So yeah. I'm going to show you. Ours was 100% zero. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but, yeah. it, isn't it? That's the uh, two dot closet. Okay. So this was a, uh, this film I interviewed there based in uh, Toronto and the editor and writer is, is in South Africa. So we had a podcast a few days ago with the two of them in, I was at six o'clock, he was at seven or eight, and they were at five hours behind me, so it was really interesting. Yeah. Now, this is a, a filmmaker called Tegan Ray, uh, Rain Sellers, and she came up with this idea. She had a dream. She's only 10 years old, and she came up with the idea, and she developed it with a writer. She's a young actress, and um, we'll show you this. And it's incredible. Okay. Make sure the audio is shared as well. Okay, can you see this? Not yet. Oh, um, I just need to click share. There we go. Okay, something's coming up. Yeah, we can see your screen now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I have a flight out. You have school tomorrow. But I have like two more sentences to finish. Fine. I'll be in to check on you in a few minutes, okay? Where are you? Mom? Mom, you woke me up. Uh, 
Gotcha. I knew you were in there. Hello? Hello? So that was a nice little film from uh, Tegan Sellers. Yeah, wow, unbelievable. It, it, she said she was, she's 10 years old? She's 10 years old. And she, dreamt, wow. she dreamt that happened. And her mom, her mom said, oh, you should write that down. Her mom wrote the idea down, I think. And then she asked her the next day and she couldn't remember it, but she'd written it down. Um, so yeah, it's, we're having, you know, this super talented people. And like you were saying, it's nice to have a focus and create something. Um, yeah definitely definitely and i thought it'd be a really nice way to kind of show people like build a community uh build a, a bond between people that isn't necessarily there straight away so uh and, and yeah it's really something... because now everything is sort of um i mean sort of the, the physical boundaries have been lifted on anything i think you know it's funny because obviously the technology of of things like zoom is not really anything new but suddenly when people are forced to avoid that sort of like physical contact and interaction everything we now know that everything we thought was impossible from afar is sort of possible and whether it's yoga classes or you know or collaborating with filmmakers abroad or anything so i think that's it's an interesting sort of new perspective that we gained maybe from this yeah absolutely i, I absolutely agree with that and the collaboration process it's always there it just takes an extra effort doesn't it i think with the situation we're all in now we're um in a situation where we we should do that and it's a it's a it's a pleasant distraction you know you're having people that are having parties and bar mitzvahs and all sorts online so it's it's all very crazy at the moment isn't it yeah i just saw i graduated from from nyu film school a few years back and now they're doing the graduation sort of remotely and you know it's all sort of pre-recorded with people from all over the place and it's also really interesting to see i mean it's obviously such a different experience but i think they they made the most of it and, and sort of turned it into a heartwarming thing despite the lack of the you know the ceremonial aspect of that it usually has so it's yeah people are people are finding creative ways to <laughs> to resolve the limitations of of this time Absolutely. Um, I'm going to show you one more before I got a couple of more questions for you. This is, I'm not, I don't like to say favorites, but this is my, this is my favorite animation that we've received. Oh, let's pause that. Uh, so the ones I'm showing you, we've either um, spoken with them or we've actually booked time in to, to speak to them. Like on an early episode that's not released yet, we showed your film to a couple of filmmakers in Canada and they absolutely loved it. That's great. Wow. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to work out some sort of way to do a group chat and showcase films between the filmmakers as well. So we'll do that as well. So we'll share screen again. Okay. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies of the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, 
The world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. So it's uh, it's quite a breadth of filmmaking, isn't it? That was amazing. I oh, write it. poetry and it was so poetic and beautiful and touching and not over pretentious, like just exact. I loved, yeah, I think the just even the choice of sort of, of the geese as, as a character now is, is really interesting and to think of that's another thing. I mean, we're obviously all very focused on, on our perspective as human beings right now, but it's, we're not the only species uh, going through these times. And I think it's interesting to think of that perspective. And I love the, the style and the, the, the narration voice is beautiful too. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I want to marry that voice. I love that voice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. touching. No, you know, it's, it's like character. when you hear like uh, Richard Attenborough or Morgan Freeman, exactly. you know, when you have that voice, the weight to it, like you, when, if you watch Shawshank Redemption, you can't imagine that film without the voiceover now. No, yeah, you and can't. It's like when you watch that, the animation, it looks like a painting. That's the most beautiful thing about it. Beautiful. It's the style of it. It's been beautiful, really beautiful. Very, yeah. also very, I mean, very high quality stuff. I mean, and I, I've, I'm not an animator myself, but my, my cousin's an animator and I've recently learned more about the process of animation and such a such an arduous sort of the amount of time. Oh yeah. my word, the time. Yeah. I think we as I think part of it, yeah, as filmmakers, we always think like, you know, everyone who's not a filmmaker doesn't understand how much effort goes into us. And then I feel like animators say the same thing about us as filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, absolutely. You guys got it easy, you know? It's like so <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I've like they say I've done a I've done a couple of seconds this month, you know what I mean? That's yeah, what they exactly. say, isn't it? So <laughs> uh like I, I saw a clip of um of a chap that was uh, trying to recreate all it was was a TIE fighter pass, you know, so he used motion control rig and he had a model and it was all green screen. He wanted it perfect. And he it took him weeks and he produced three seconds. So, you know, because he wanted it absolutely perfect. Wow. And he was all, he was devastated, but also like so proud because it looked like Star Wars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you can easily make a model, you can do the motion track easy. But if you make it look right and genuine, it's, uh, it's something, something to be proud of. And that's what I like yeah. to say about your film. And I wanted to see more. And the music at the end was a great choice as well because, like, oh, where, where's this leading to? I wanted to see <laughs> more. Honestly, I really did. I think it make a really, not necessarily these characters, but if you do a web series or something like that in that tone and style, I think it'll work very, very well. Thank you. No, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely try doing that. And uh, yeah, the music, it's funny you mentioned that. It's also, I mean, I realized we needed something for the end title and, and I wanted something that we have, you know, to, the rights for. And it's just, uh, I had a, at film school, I had this assignment. I took a sort of film, a music for film class and we had to compose this cue for, just a clip from uh, Motorcycle Diaries, I think it was, and and that's something oh, that yeah. I I did on sort of I don't remember if it was GarageBand or something else, but I, I had it on my computer and I just <laughs> found that it worked there. But yeah, that was, well, that's was that's like uh, that's like finding a great clip in a film bin, isn't it? Yeah, you know, getting like the getting the audio yeah. and not quite there. apocalypse <laughs> now, but, uh, but a, a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> exactly well uh, thank you both very much and uh i'm very very humbled to that you've sent us your film and your film is so fantastic and we're going to market this we're going to we're going to kind of shout it out and we'll give a little uh a little message to tegan after this as well saying you love the film uh her yeah. film, uh, dark closet so yeah and uh yeah thank you both very much and if you can Thanks send so me thank you. if you can send me an email with a hebrew for the title of the film that'll be really sure. appreciated yeah Sure, we'll definitely do that. All right, thank you very thank much. You Have a good day. Enjoy your evening. Night. Yeah. All yeah, right, see you later. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.